that with a, um, a track there called Nervous. The time now here on Kiwi is 7.43. Key. A lot of people say politicians can't be trusted. They lie. Is it possible to survive in politics without occasionally bending the truth? Well, we live in a dynamic environment, so of course things change. <laughs> what is that yeah, of course things change. But actually, I've campaigned and worked hard for three years um, and tried to keep every promise I've made. Of course, John Key there speaking in the One News um, first up uh, election debate with the two <laughs> leaders of... Uh, <laughs> National and uh, and Labour there joining us to um, talk about the election debate um, is Salwan Manning from Scoop.co.nz. Morning, Salwan. Yeah, good morning, Glenn. Good morning. Now, um, okay, so let's um, let's have a blow by blow. Really, I suppose your analysis of what happened. Yeah, uh, that's about it. It's a bit of a state of it roundup, I think, Glenn. Um, yeah. You know, the general election, obviously, it's certainly well underway, and we can kind of see that the two leaders of these main parties that fronted up to each other, they're almost prepared to to go down to knuckle dusters if that's kind of necessary. But there's a lot riding on this leaders' debate. And uh, I guess, you know, let's have a look at why that's the case. Um, you know, they're, they're, it's, for a start, it's a rare event. Uh, remember the Prime Minister, John Key? He, uh, he decided that he would not front up and join a leaders' debate with all the other leaders of all the other parties that are in Parliament, that he would only take on Phil Goff. Yeah. Um, so that followed with Phil Goff saying... OK, I'll pick up that challenge. I'll go one-on-one -on -one with John Key. That's all sweet. That's OK. Now, for both of them, that debate, kicking off this election campaign, had to be decisive. Uh, and really, you know, it was an important one for all of us to start to really put it into a context of what we are seeing here. Um, remember, they had to be impressive, but they also had to really take command of those decisive differences between the two parties. Now, Goff... He had to kind of position Labour um, and Labour's message in particular as, as honest. And he had to paint John Key as perhaps uh, less upfront and uh, maybe even untruthful. Hmm. Um, those were the key kind of messages, the key things that he wanted to kind of get out there. Now, um, for, for John Key, he had to paint Goff as a, a big spender, an incompetent, you know, and, and, and we, saw, we saw both of these politicians, both of these leaders, trying to their best to actually sow those simple messages out there for the public to, to churn over, to digest. Now, check out this segment from the TVNZ One News Leaders Debate, where Goff deploys changes to Labor's retirement package, uh, its policy that are announced just short of that, um, to deliver a bit of a hit on John Key, and John Key's response here, it's interesting kind of stuff. We want to tell the truth to New Zealanders. They know that we have to change if we're going to make our superannuation sustainable. They know that this change is inevitable and they want to know why politicians haven't been telling them the truth and giving them as much notice as possible. John Key, you're ruling out this move to raise the retirement age. Can the country really afford to pay for having 1.3 million New Zealanders aged over 65 by the middle of the century? Under National's plan, Guy, and yes, under Labor's, no. So let's understand, we need a strong economy <laughs> uh, because we need to take New Zealand forward, provide support for families, make sure we pay for the services we want. What Phil Goff's not telling you is he's out there spending your money, a bit like a drunken sailor, to be perfectly honest, out That's there spending lots nonsense. of cash and what he's actually having to do is go out there and raise the age of pension, make New Zealanders work two years longer, put on a capital gains tax because he can't control the spending. He's so despite what um, Phil Goff said there, um, it wasn't the king hit? No, it wasn't a king hit. Um, but at the same time, both of, both of those politicians got those key messages out there in a sense. Um, but another big issue um, that developed there was, for, particularly in this debate, was asset sales. Now, that, you know, if, if Goff was going to front foot uh, uh, Labor's perhaps its Achilles heel with this raising of the retirement age, asset sales was going to be, you know, the National Party's um, Achilles heel. And Guy Nesman had kind of put that out there for them to address. Uh, the more accurately, really, the, uh, you shouldn't say asset sales in a sense. You know, we've got to get exactly right what National's intention is here. Yeah. National Party's intention is to place state-owned assets out to be traded on the stock market, or accurate, more accurately than that, um, half of the value of those state-owned assets. So um, state, state trading um, is, is a key attack point for Labor. Um, you will see a lot of that in the coming weeks. Um, 
Um, now, Goff knows Kiwis like to have their publicly air owned assets really doing well and the profits feeding back into the government coffers, so it's a bit to the betterment of all New Zealand. Uh, Key knows this too, and that's why his government has been kind of loathed, really, to kind of go back to the tried and true thing that national parties did in the past and flick off those state assets, as, as you know, the right wing of Labour, when it was in charge of Labour, did also in the late, no, the mid to late 1980s. So it's a contestable topic, obviously, and it takes the country years, even decades, to actually get back to a point where it is actually on a stable footing with a, a balance of state-owned assets in the private sector feeding into the economy. Mm. Now, Goff's Labour Party suggests that really only wealthy Kiwis will be able to afford um, to buy and invest in, in the, those publicly owned assets once they're putting onto the stock market. And in a sense, you know, that only um, the wealthy, not even the middle class, would be able to enjoy uh, that kind of investment. Um, but once these are sold, you know, Goff's line obviously is to um, be able to, they'll never be bought back, should we say. Um, so let's, let's check out to see what, um, what the politicians did on this particular issue there, Glenn. I think it's an important one. We bought back Kiwi Rail so when the private sector had asset stripped it and run it into the ground. We set up Kiwi Bank because the foreign owned Australian banks yep. were the only banks that were, were actually providing those services, had no competition. We gave New Zealanders well, the okay, choice. Well, just and they me, voted with their feet and 750,000 well, of them then, invest Phil, in it. Why didn't you buy back 100% of it? For, you sat there in government for nine years with massive surpluses and you we, said Air New Zealand's a okay, darn well, good we're going to end the bit on the asset sales because right I want to come Zealand, to another, I want to come, Mr Coff, uh, to uh, a controversial policy of the Labour parties. Now. So it's interesting, um, though, <laughs> you know, the um, donkeys come back there saying, well, the assets were doing well, why didn't they... Um, uh, you know, why didn't they buy them back? Yeah, exactly. You know, so it's coming down to a philosophical question. Mm. As you heard there, yep, John Keep. Um, assets are doing well. Why didn't Labor buy 100% of them back if that was the case? You know, this is this is where he's going there. Um, but what he was doing was basically trying to establish some sort of comparison between Labor and them and actually Labor's track record and what they're trying to do. So we know that John Key's government is actually trying to disinvest from, from that area. So his, his line, if we look at that, he, he's kind of implying that they don't do as well in the pri in the public um, coffers and um, the uh, public sector that they do better over in the private. Um, this this kind of led on to this capital gains tax, really another one that you would expect that Labor potentially could have taken a bit of a, a hit on when it rolled it out a couple of months ago. But remember, when it did that, it, it, it took um, national party strategists by surprise in many cases. Uh, the the the, um, the political party in New Zealand, you know, most of them, all of them in the in the history have have never taken the courage to actually float the idea of a capital gains tax. It's always been believed, even by pundits and political commentators like ourselves, and you know, that, that if a party rolled out a capital gains tax, there would almost be death to that party at the polls. Mm. Um, Labor did its soft launch, remember, a couple of months ago, uh, and then uh, it kind of worked around um, doing, you know, that had hit out with the, the detail of the policy a couple of, uh, or maybe nine days later or so. By then, you know, key businesses and uh, business items Icons, really, they came out in support of the principles of a capital gains tax. Now, it really cut the National Party off on the chase there. Um, so, so could Goff perform and um, be able to deliver uh, selling this capital gains tax? You know, he's already done it to the business sector. What about to New Zealand? We'll see how he kind of performs on this quickly. Yes, it starts because the right I want to come to another. I want to come, Mr. Coff, uh, to uh, a controversial policy of the Labour parties now, which is the capital gains tax. Mm. What's the good bit? Well, the good of it is this: first of all, Guyan, everyone that's out there on a wage and a salary pays uh, tax on every dollar they earn. Uh, but if you make money, if I have an investment property, which I do, and I flog it off, I don't pay any tax on it at all. Sam Morgan said that he sold Trade Me for seven hundred million dollars. And it was wrong that he paid no tax on it. So it's about fairness. But it also raises the revenue that allows us, John, to keep the assets, that allows us to pay off the debt, uh, and that continues to see okay. the dividend received. Okay, you've made so that was Phil Goff's answer. Yeah, and, um, you know, he's putting it out there for people to churn over. Was that a credible argument? Or did he make sense? Now, in, in response, it's important, let's have a look at what Key's response was. Yes, yes, yes. So, Mr Key, what's wrong with the yeah, capital gains so let, tax? Let's understand what slows an economy down. Three things. More taxation, right? higher interest rates, 
or more compliance costs on businesses. So why on earth does New Zealand need another tax? Under national, it doesn't. And what will that tax do? It'll tax the entire productive sector, every farm, every business. Now, so that was John Key's response. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, once again, um, another, another big problematic policy potentially um, for this time for the National Party um, where it was vulnerable and has been vulnerable on its policies on, on mining in the first instance on um, conservation land but it more, more recently you know the Rena oil spill has raised up um, how vulnerable we are in the, uh, in the um, clean up kind of phase. We do not obviously have the necessarily hard, necessary hardware when things go awry in the sea so the deep sea mining issue that has been floating around and um, Greenpeace has raised um, and Many others, you know, environmental concerns have come out from that debate on deep sea mining. You know, how, how did um, John Key uh, go on that one? And we've got a bit of a clip here on that, um, Glenn. To Key and then Mr Goff. Yeah, so I agree with the expansion of um, mining in New Zealand. It has to be done in an environmentally sustainable way. But you cancelled it, didn't you? People walked down Queen Street no, 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 and you stopped. No, no, what we said was... Um, oh, yep, you okay, in it. terms of Schedule 4, yep, we agreed we took that off the table. And we'd explored that. There were very small areas we looked at. But actually, there are great opportunities in New Zealand to expand our oil and gas activities, our coal mining activities. Uh, there's a number of others, iron sands in New Zealand. And actually, look, we want better jobs for our kids. We want better health care. We want to make sure that we can provide the sort of place that New Zealanders want to stay. OK, want... so John Key there on yeah. mining. Yeah, and, you know, what, what concerns me there, um, Glenn, is that the Prime Minister, the leader of the National Party here, he did not even raise the Pike River mine disaster as, as, as an, uh, an, an example of when things go wrong and what we can po possibly have learnt from that to make sure that uh, it's going to be safe in the future. And we can clearly see that uh, under a John Key-led national government, they're going to go headlong into doing more mining in New Zealand. We do not have the hardware... For, you know, obviously for a proper clean-up of, of the Rena oil spill, despite the efforts that are going in there. Um, Pike River was an absolute disaster, and mm. we still have not been able to actually tie, tie that one down. And yet John Key, on this key point uh, where the National is going into mining of New Zealand um, uh, resources in mm. a big way, mm. um, it didn't even kind of address those concerns that are sitting there in the public. Uh, now, he, he, here's, here's Goff's response um, to the same question. We're, you know, I'm not too sure on that. mining in New Zealand, of course, but it can't be to subordinate environmental considerations. Labor never considered ever, John, mining in our national parks and our Schedule 4 areas. Yes, we've got offshore oil rigs now, but we haven't got them at the depth that are planned uh, by Petrobras. And until we've got guarantees about liability, contingency planning and the safety of those rigs, we wouldn't do it. So that's Phil Goff there on mining. Um, but the, I guess yeah. one of the interesting questions um, came up about lying now, didn't it? Yes, it did. Um, so, you know, this, this came through from this whole kind of area of where, where, where the whole debate was going. You know, we, we saw that um, what was happening here was uh, we had uh, John Key, very confident, coming out very strong in the first part of that debate. Um, he clearly thought, I think, that uh, Phil Goff was going to perhaps be more concerned about his internal kind of pressures, you know, Labour Party pressures, leadership kind of kind of speculations and things like that that have dogged him for the last few years. But what came out here was, was a Phil Goff that was very, very committed to the issues. We saw that in the rollout of their campaigns earlier on too. Um, and we saw Goff sewing in, you know, and challenging John Key on issues and once again just peeling back those layers. Perhaps... You know, in some ways, the skilled operator of John Key almost looked like that aspect of his personality and his leadership was almost like a veneer. And it was like Goff on issues was starting to peel Key back. Mm. Um, he, I think in that sense, he, he had the measure of John Key. Um, but Goff, in my sense, in my view, uh, Glenn, he, he, he won this debate because of, you know, the way he unfurled that tactical plan, uh, that... that, that, that uh, uh, he, you know, that peeling away of keys for near. Um, to, to one was fair, left to would, wonder... Would, would you say that it was... It, some, some of it um, gave uh, the public glimpses to what actually happens in the debating chamber that the public actually never see because people don't watch Parliament TV, and why would you, I suppose? But a lot of this stuff actually goes on in, in the debating chamber in Parliament, and people don't see yeah. perhaps the... Um, the, the 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 comedy character that John Key can be in the debating chamber when he is when he has his back up against the wall. 
Yeah, I think yeah, you know that, that's absolutely right. I mean, in my thinking, my analysis of the whole thing, what I saw there is John Key basically exposing himself and resorting in some ways to the viewing public, like you were alluding to there, mm. to a rare thing. Um, uh, we had that underdog contender who came out of his corner composed and tactically sharp, and that was, that was Goff. Um, Key, he, he was showy, quick to respond, uh, mostly on message, but, and clearly a national celebrity there. Mm. Um, but it appeared Key thought Goff would be preoccupied. Instead, Goff came out, um, he, he debated strong pr kind of principles armed with values that seem to be connected in my view to that extraordinarily unfathomable th thing you know the the kiwi way um, and that that was the uh, the tools that goff used and and due to that i think he won on the night uh, and and i guess you know that that's how it was there, there's there's a clip there um uh, with, with guy nespin delivering um key questions perhaps it's a good way to to go out on this um is, is sometimes he asks, is, is it necessary for a politician to lie? Um, and here are the two takes on that. And, um, and uh, thank you very much, Selwyn, as well. The environment's dynamic and sometimes you have to change your mind or bend the truth. Actually, no, I, I don't think there's ever a time when you, when you lie. I don't think there's ever a time when you go to the electorate before an election and say one thing and then simply turn around so and do the opposite. That? Uh, look, I've, I've spent my whole political Never? career trying to maintain integrity, and I, and I believe that I've done that. That's why I'm still there. But, look, you know, John, I'm sorry. Uh, I remember the promises that were made before the last election. You weren't going to touch KiwiSaver. You weren't going to touch working for families. Uh, you weren't going to bring in GST. You weren't going to slash public service okay, numbers. Mr. Mr. You've Kim. done all of those things. Yeah, so, so um, the, the, that's not quite the way that uh, Phil Goff portrays it, but... Nevertheless, in government, with a global financial crisis, with massive levels of unemployment offshore, with the country potentially going broke, I mean, let's understand, when we came into office, we inherited a decade of deficits, debt that was going to 60% oh. of GDP. Well, well look, here we are, go no, again. They are, decade of deficits. Okay. We had a surplus in 2008, John, okay. and you know it. Okay. 5.8 billion up. dollars. Let, let's... This edition of um, State of It, as we leave those two to, <laughs> to their arguing. Um, Chip, find this as a video once more up at uh, Kiwi FM. .co.nz, also scoop.co.nz as well with all the show notes and links to everything.